Hi, and welcome to another Army Showcase with one of the biggest bug collections I've ever seen. Yeah. Welcome to a Tyranid Army Showcase. What has drawn you to the swarm? Definitely aesthetics, like I love monsters. So the Nidzilla kind of term and play style with just lots of big bugs is kind of uh, probably the number one thing that got me. How many points do you think is here? Uh, 15,200. That is a lot of bugs. Yes. And this has been a collection probably over many years, I'm thinking. Yeah, so I, I actually started playing in second edition, at the very tail end of it, so I started playing a long time ago and got out uh, partway through third, uh, kind of did the, you know, pursuing the career and kind of dropped off a bit. And right when second edition dropped, uh, or sorry, not second, sixth dropped, uh, I started playing again. And obviously went in hard on the Nids. Who are, who are all these bugs? What, what's, what's their purpose of being and why are they here? So the Tyranids are the most nicest, purest, loyal faction in the 40k universe. <laughs> But they're, they're, the, they're the big bad guy. They don't really care about anything, just themselves, and it's just, they're hungry. Going through the galaxy, eating everything. Eating everything. Yeah. Literally everything. Everything. It's their survival, that's all they care about. Do you have any uh, uh, lore for your specific Tyranid faction here? Do you, do, is there anything that is unique about it? Yeah, so I named this Hive Fleet Typhon, and Typhon was uh, mainly, I was kind of thinking the tidal wave effect, because I would, I would guess that's how a guardsman would describe it as he's yeah. about to die. Um, all these kind of coming over the mountain. So Typhon was a god of the ocean, um, I believe in Greek mythology, or some type of water god. So I just kind of was a name I liked and it kind of fit the water aesthetic and the blue kind of look. I like it. Uh, blue tones and then some purple highlights and kind of a brown carapace kind of look. Yeah, the blue is kind of the main color. Purple is all the like the not as tough flesh, like the you know the leathery parts of wings or in, in the joints and stuff. Now you drove quite a ways to be here. Like this isn't local for you. You came all the way down here from where? Where again? Trail BC. Trail BC. Which is, how long of a trip was that? From Corner. It's about six seven hours. Six, yeah, six, seven. You drove all the way down here just to show off your cool army. I think that's awesome. Thank you so much for doing so. Yeah. Thank you for having me. You don't often. Get get to put your entire collection down on a table here. No, and it looks a lot better here than it does in my home. <laughs> like, well, we did, we did put all the lights and stuff like that yeah, on there. Yeah, uh, it doesn't have the same effect in my basement as it does uh, does here, that's for sure. Well, we'll try to do it justice. This guy right here, pick, pick him up and tell us about him. Who's yeah. who's that? So this is a uh, Dimacaron, which I'm, I think I'm pronouncing that right model. And I kind of wanted to do uh, some sculpting a bit because I've never done it before. To me, he's the monstrous creature version of a lictor, right? Same kind of fluff. Instead of being sneaky, though, he's designed to just run through the battlefield, jump over everything, and just get the characters, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of wanted to pose him like a lictor, do the, you know, the feeder tendrils on the face, and I kind of was just trying to pose the traditional lictor style, so I changed, I, I cut a lot of his joints and changed his tail to kind of get at that, you know, those kind of side overhead talons and stuff. Yeah, you did a lot of work to convert that, but okay, there's another one here that I really want you to talk about. What is this? Yeah. Can, can I pick it up? Yes, you can. What is this? This looks amazing. So I started calling that my mega tyrant. Mega tyrant. Um, yeah, and it I was my it. goal. So when I hit 10,000 points, I didn't come up with this conversion, somebody else did. I saw it on the internet, um, I really liked it. So I figured when I hit 10,000 points, I was gonna kind of do my own kind of custom special character. Just something kind of unique, because I haven't really done a lot of customization with this. I really like the Tyranid line. I've never like felt like I needed to change yeah. the models because I like them so much, right? So they, they are a very cool range, yeah. I like the aesthetic of them. So when I saw that, I was like, I gotta do that thing. It's, it's an Acheron kit from Age of Sigmar, uh, Hive Tyrant wings on the side, Maliceptor head, uh, Toxicrine, little spiky tendrils. <laughs> so now I used him as, I use him now as a winged uh, Dimatron typically, and also as a Hive Tyrant. What, what does 40K mean to you? What is, what is playing this kind of uh, collection? We talked about it a bit before in the kind of the preview, but tell us a bit about what, what does 40K mean to you? What, like what, what, it seems to have been a big part of your life right now. Yeah, it, it, uh, it coupled with a good time with me having kids. Um, it was a nice hobby that I could do at home and still have kids running around, it's quiet from your sleeping, <laughs> right? Usually, unless you're having a rowdy game, but it's kind of like a way to take a nice break from the day-to-day -day routine of being a dad, a, you know, employee. It's just, the hobby side is a great therapeutic aspect for me. I like find paintings, that too. Yeah. It's just, it's so therapeutic to just, 
it, I mean, it's still, you gotta think about it, but it, it kind of turns your brain off. It, it kind of clear, it's like a palate cleanser yes. for your brain. You just be able to focus on one thing and just like really focus on it. I find it at the end of a stressful day, a good thing. And it still fills that uh, artistic niche um, where you get to create something and, you know, create some art and, and kind of throw your personality or your custom, your customization into it. Mm. The lore side is really cool. It's this just amazing world that you can kind of get lost in. The stories so are, easily. It's it's by far my favorite my favorite uh, universe for lack of a better term, right? Can you point to any story in particular that you're a fan of? Uh, Whether it's Black Library or a little blurb and a yeah, the Horus Heresy stuff is is really neat. Um, I, I just like, I, I really like the, just the Tyranid kind of vibe. It's very Starship Troopers-y. Yeah. Right? And like, same with like uh, StarCraft. I like the Zerg kind of feel. Um, and not to say like when I was, you know, watching Starship Troopers, I was, you know, rooting for the bugs. But uh, yeah, I just, I just love their kind of storyline, how they're, they're just that big bad guy that everyone kind of wants to ignore because nobody wants to fight them. You can't talk with them. And all they're really doing is just their kind of primal Thing to survive and feed, but they never really kind of told us who's running the show behind them. They haven't really fully. So, what's your head knowledge? What's your head canon about what uh, what is actually going on with the Tyranids? Like, I've heard I've heard that they're running for something bigger, that they're here just because of the Astronomicon. Uh, what what kind of do you feel like the Tyranids are here for? One theory I like is that the old ones created them to kind of purge the galaxy because they screwed up. That's why they don't actually uh, tap into the warp. They have the hive mind where they use their psychic powers Dang. and they just are attracted by life. So they just send them in there. They can hopefully purge them. They're designed so that they can't be unloyal. Everything listens and does exactly what it's told. And uh, they're just gonna kill everything off. They'll die because they'll have nothing to eat and then they can just hit the reset button. I like that theory. That's an interesting one. And I, uh, it's the one codex I always read cover to cover every time. Oh, okay. It comes out yeah, and, yeah. and I, I collect them all. They haven't really advanced it too much. In the last codex, they kind of exp like gave you a little different thing in there. That a few a different people, interesting things in there, yeah. Yeah, that a lot of people didn't know about. So one of them was High Fleet Tiamat, and it's, uh, yeah, so it's just protecting this planet. They're protecting some sort of planet. They went to this planet, and they're building something on it. Yeah, and it's a continent-sized creature that just makes psychers' heads explode when they get close to it. Yeah. So it's clear, it, like to me, it's probably, you know, some type of beacon to extend, you know, synapse I think or an it's, amplifier. I think whatever. it's a home for the hive mind. Yeah, maybe. I think it's a new, like, a new hive mind being created. Yeah, whatever that leader is or, you know, yeah. whether it's an overlord or, you know, exactly, you don't really know, but it's, yeah. it's cool. And they also um, expanded a bit with the different hive fleets, because in, in the beginning it was just behemoth. Now they've kind of shown that the hive fleets, even though they're different, oh, they yeah. look different, they work together. So if there's one high fleet that's like struggling, another high fleet might just leave this planet that's undefended and really easy to conquer. They'll just <laughs> they'll just drive right by it and let the other high fleet come and absorb it to get stronger and stuff. So that's really the only advancement in uh, in the lore as far as you know how the Tyranids tick. Let's talk gameplay for a little bit here. Okay, so uh, I see a shirt here, BC Battle Brothers. So tell us about what BC Battle Brothers is. For anybody who doesn't know, like if you go to an event, say a tournament or something, yeah. as a team, one of the nice things about going. Um, as that kind of you know documented group is that it guarantees you don't play each other first round <laughs> which is great because you're always playing each other anyways so yeah. you want to avoid that but more importantly it's a, just a better way to game so it's just a group of friends we started as kids and most of the original people who played as kids are in the group now and we kind of just we're very like-minded, right? So when we go to an event or something like that, we wanted to kind of do that whole hobby aspect. Mm. I've heard like Tack talk about that quite a bit before, um, where you want to have, you know, go in there with good sportsmanship in mind, um, play a good game, and put a little bit of work into your appearance or effort, right? Um, into what you're bringing to have a cool uh, kind of thematic. Yeah. So we've kind of gone to those events, met people. Um, as we've met, you know, like-minded people, uh, we've, you know, asked them to join, and it's grown, and now we're about, 20-ish people, something like that. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, all over the world too. Oh, really? I'll just be this Canada and the U.S. But <laughs> what are you kind of running these days? Like in terms of like playing games? Like what, what are you what are you finding you're having fun um, playing with? Uh, monsters. So in the the recent book, they really uh, toned down the the little griblies because those were kind of dominating quite a bit until Crusher Stampede came out, and now the monsters are just awesome. They're, They're so fun, good. aren't yes. they? And I love Nadzilla. That's like my, it's yeah. my favorite thing. So just lots and lots of these. Yeah, I play play all monsters if I could. So um, that's that's kind of the main thing. I've been I've been playing lots as monsters, and it's it's fun. So you're feeling the book is a really thematic, fluffy book. 
yeah. even though it's very powerful right now? Yeah, the synapse rules are really neat, the way they kind of designed the army, because before, the, they didn't really write them that great, so some of the stuff would, there was times when like units would like, just kill themselves or run off the board, <laughs> or if you, uh, if you took out the leaders. So they, they've kind of written it really neat where stuff continues to work, but if you play well and keep your synapse in the right spots, it just is buffed and works way better. So it's still important for the opponent to kill the leaders, yep. but it's not such a detriment yeah, that yeah. it feel not as feel bad yeah. if you lose all your leaders. Yeah, yeah, everything doesn't just run away or stop working or you know forget how to uh, you know fight. Right? Yeah. So it's it's neat that way. Well, this is a beautiful army, and I see a significant gene stealer cult presence as well there. Yeah. Probably three thousand points, I think you said. Yeah, three thousand wow. points of gene stealer cults. Is is there a Tyranid model you don't own here? Yeah, there's, there's surprisingly there's still a few that aren't. I own them, but they're not uh, they're not painted. And that, right. so one thing uh, also that you can't really see is there's tons of magnetized stuff. Oh, okay. So like for instance, sure. like this guy here, this Harispex, yep. he also makes that thing over there, right? Oh, so so I have, his head comes off. Yes, his head comes off, his arms come off, and I have. Oh, very nicely done. Yeah. Yeah. So I have all the pieces to actually make him in that. I'm. I almost have three of every monster fully painted. So I have close to like a solid forty-ish like monster arms, heads, all <laughs> painted on magnets, which is actually quite a bit because some yeah. of these some of these guns are and weapons are actually they're huge, right? They're bigger than a lot of the infantry models. So there's there's a lot of work in magnetized stuff here, like a lot of work. Do you, do you have a favorite? Miniature here? Probably this guy. Oh, he's so cool. I love him too. Oh, there's actually a neat story behind him. So, on my 30th birthday, some of my friends in the BC Battle Brothers group, mainly my you know, my cousin and Matt Bonnershock, they organized getting this model for me for my oh, 30th yeah. birthday. And then they also gave him to individual family members in pieces. So they wrapped him up in, in multiple boxes. So. He's a lot of pieces too. Yeah, he's a few pieces. So yeah, I open this, uh, I open this present, and it's a leg, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this what is, is this? Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I know what this is, and then I get another box from, you know, somebody who knows nothing about yeah. Warhammer, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. And then it's the other leg and the body, you know, eventually all the pieces, and it was is pretty pretty cool to see uh, my family and friends and my uh, gaming awesome. members do something like that. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, yeah, um, I also see some custom spore mines here. Yeah, there's a few hiding in the back. There's the the tap dancer uh, spore mines. I know, I know you think you don't like it, but I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That, that that is a beefy spore mine. It looks <laughs> like something that would actually explode and do a bunch of moral wounds. Yeah, yeah, it does for sure. Cool. Well, um, we're gonna get to see you guys play this a little bit. You brought one of your uh, your teammates out um, playing Harlequins. Yes. And so we're gonna get to play a game between uh, Tyranids and Harlequins. That should be a lot of fun if it hasn't come out already. We're glad to have you here. Thank you for driving all this way down to showcase your army. It looks gorgeous. Is there anything else you want to say? No, I want to say hi to my kids. Oh yeah, say hi to your kids. Esme, Asher, Felix, hello. And uh, yeah, just a shout out to my gaming group. It's They're very supportive. Um, I didn't really touch on that too much, but definitely through everything going on over last year with the pandemic yep. and just gaming in general, our gaming group, and definitely why I'm proud to wear this jersey is uh, we've been really supportive of each other and we're like a family and it's uh, it's cool too. To, rep to represent them. Well, we're glad to have you here. Thank you for coming in, and uh, for the Hive Lord. Yeah. Hive Swarm? Hive Lord? Hive Swarm? Hive the, great, the Great Devourer? <laughs> the Bugs? Well, uh, do you want to do the, the ending with me? You say, uh, I, I say until we see you next time, and you say, play on right to the camera. Okay. All right. Well, until we see you next time, play, play on. on. <laughs> there you go.